folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today I'm going to do a bit of an open water swim test with the Garmin Phoenix 5. Um, now this is the middle version, so the Phoenix 5, the Phoenix 5S, the Phoenix 5X. Uh, they're all the same from an open water swim standpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and do this today and do a bit of a tricky open water swim. So the first part's pretty straightforward. I'm going to head out uh, along this break here, break wall, and then I'm going to hang a left and go down the beach. Um, so the beach, as you can see here, it goes a long way. I'm in Barcelona, uh, and it basically, I'm going to continue this way along the beach, uh, merely because I can see the tall buildings there a lot easier, um, and it's not into the sun. And I'm going to continue about a kilometer that way, and then I'm going to do this loop through kind of a closed marina of sorts, and that'll be an interesting test to see how exacting the GPS is in that area, um, and to see how well it holds up. Now, of course, that's probably unusual for a lot of people swimming just in straight lines and big circles around lakes and things like that. But I think it's certainly realistic. You look at a lot of races that may have complex buoy patterns or weird triangles and stuff like that. So it makes sense to me. Um, what I'm going to do is go get started. I've got the unit already finding GPS right there. It's got GPS, no problem at all. Uh, and then here, what I've got is the Phoenix 3. And this is going to act as my basically uh, course of record, a record of course. And so it's attached to this swim buoy that floats along behind me. Um, this stays out of the water, so that way the GPS track is accurate the entire time. I also have the Suto Spartan Ultra here as well, just to keep things all this stuff over here. Uh, that's pretty much it, pretty straightforward. So that will pop in the water, freeze my ass off. Uh, the water is right now 13 degrees Celsius, 56 degrees Fahrenheit. It is really cold and it's roughly the same temperature outside, so it's not any warmer here in the air. Let's get started. Not warm at all. Gonna, gonna take a second or 90 to get used to this water temperature. It's not, it's not all warm water swims for me. I know you see like Australia and stuff like that. This is not warm at all. Okay. Okay, I think I'm all ready to get rolling. I'm as warm as I'm gonna get. Um, what I do in case you're wondering is I put my GoPro, this is what this is, the GoPro here by Black, um, just right here actually, just goes right inside there, and then it's nice and safe and I don't have to worry about it. Um, so with that, let's get swimming. Oh, still not warm. Okay, here we are. Uh, just crossed 500 meters, 500 yards, uh, a little under eight minutes. So like seven, like 750 or so. So all is good so far. Things are going pretty well. It's definitely a bit, uh, a bit wavy out here, but it's not too bad. Could be worse, you know. Oh, there goes the horizon again. So I'm aiming for that thing way the hell down there. Not sure if I'm gonna get there, to be honest. Uh, we'll see. Anyways, let's keep going. Okay, so we're about 1,200 yards in the swim. Uh, just went under over 20 minutes. It's not too bad, so my initial plan was to cut Outside this break there, come back through the marina. But it's pretty strong waves right now, and given the girl can't see me, I'm gonna come up cut. <laughs> Sorry, cut into the marina for now, and uh, see how I do tracking along this break on the inside, and then reverse course back out to the beach and call it done before we lose all the light. So let's uh, catch you somewhere in the marina. Okay, so I made it in. Then uh, I don't know. 340 yards before I talked to you. So we're in the breakwater there, they're in the, the gap. And much calmer in here. It's actually not touching the marina, there's no boats in here at all. It's simply just a break wall there uh, that keeps it a bit calmer in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up swimming back this way. Not quite sure if I'm gonna go out around the break wall and back into the beach or just simply cut in this cove right here and, and call it done. But I'll catch you back up on shore. Oh, metrics wise. So, uh, 1,600, almost 1,600 uh, yards here, uh, 28 minutes, I've been talking a few times before. I can go and change the data fields, sorry. So the current lap distance is uh, 82, 83 yards in two minutes, most of that I've been talking here and filming. Again, there's the time of day, and then there's my total distance and total time again. You can customize all these, I really haven't bothered yet on this unit to customize my open water swim settings, but Maybe we'll do that afterwards. Oh, and just to point out again, this is the swim buoy I use. Yeah, it's great for tracking where I'm going and all that jazz, but it's even better that people can see me. 
especially like right now where it's getting a little bit darker. It's actually not as dark as probably it looks in the camera, but um, it's nice that people can see me easily. The girl can see me from shore and uh, boaters can see me. So no problems there. There's wind service, stuff like that out here. Everyone sees me, I don't get hit. It's a good thing. Anyways, as I was saying, for this time I'm real, back on shore. Okie doke, successfully out of the water. So I would have ended the video down there in the water, but you can see those dot things there, right there. Uh, the uh, sea urchins, which I really didn't want to float into one and it just would have sucked balls. So um, I have enough problems with ocean wildlife as it is. Um, so I didn't want to end it there and hit that and have a bad day. So anyways, here I am, finished up the swim inside. You can see uh, the view now from above here in the marina thing, um, all done. So let's look at these numbers real quick. Stop there for a second, sit here on this little ledge. Oh, there we go. Okay. The one here on the oops, a little bit light here. This reservoir is 1,608 yards. Um, so this is the one on the swim uh, buoy here. This registered 1,809 yards on the Phoenix Five. Um, so that doesn't terribly surprise me. Um, typically, this one will usually register less because it's just going to be so perfect um, because it's above the water the entire time. I do see a little more on this. Uh, sometimes, you know, you'll see basically this will cut a corner and then make up for it and swing and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go inside and we're going to check out the actual lines and see how they look. In case you're wondering about the Sunto Spurt in here, um, at some point along the way, namely the start, um, I didn't correctly hit the start button, so it started a little bit late, uh, but we can still look at the track and see how it did once I started it at one of those buoy stops along the way. Anyways, let's head on inside. Okay, so I've got the swim track loaded up into the DCR analyzer. Uh, this is the, the suite of tools that I use basically to analyze different tracks, whether it be for running or cycling or swimming or really any sport at all. Um, now, in this case, I'm not using the heart rate side of the functionality and all that kind of stuff. I'm just really focused on uh, the swim track itself. So you see here, I have three different units. I've got the Sunto Spartan Ultra up top. Note that again, that's a delayed start right there. Um, and then I've got the Phoenix 3 on the swim buoy. Uh, and then I have the Phoenix 5 on the wrist. Uh, so what I can do here is I can go and zoom into this and look at some of these individual tracks. And if we go out to the very start is where we're going to go here first. This is kind of where I began on the beach. I'm going to go a little too far there, otherwise it gets into the different uh, skewed mode. I want to show that. Um, so what I have right here, that red track, I know these colors are a little kind of similar, but just bear with me. The red track is the wrist from the Phoenix 5, and the purple track there uh, is the swim buoy track. So that's the Phoenix 3 that was on top of the swim buoy. So you can see they start off, you know, obviously at the same spot, uh, and they go out here in this corner. You know, certainly the, the Phoenix 3 tracks a little bit more smoothly here. It matches kind of where I was going. The Phoenix 5 is very, very close. It's just sort of zigzagging across, and this is a like similar or a common pattern that you see a lot of times on open water swims where um, on a wrist device like this, it'll kind of bounce back and forth uh, as it's picking up that satellite and dropping the satellite. And that's what you have to remember a little bit is that every single time your wrist goes underneath the water, it loses the GPS connectivity and it has to regain that GPS connectivity again and that, you know, one and a half to one second or so above the water. And so it's really just plotting all these points and kind of taking an algorithm on top of that and figuring out roughly where you're going. It's not quite perfect, but it generally gets pretty close. So anyways, this is the first stop right there in the middle that you see uh, where that blue line starts. Uh, that's roughly the 500 yard, 500 meter marker. Um, and that is where I remember to start the Spartan. I thought I started at the very beginning, but apparently I didn't press the button hard enough. So you can see us pick that up there. Um, the two units, uh, the two Garmin units do track very nicely through here. The Spartan really has a tough time, and I've really had a tough time in general with the Sunto Spartan Ultra and open water swimming. You know, it's mostly fine for me in running and cycling and stuff like that, but it's been a real bit of a, a troublemaker um, for me months, like since last summer. Uh, but I met with the Sunto folks earlier this week and I actually gave them my unit and I, I they're going to try to figure this out and see what's going on there um, and see if they can troubleshoot why that particular unit is having such issues on the swim. Uh, and in any case, so we're just going to ignore this blue line because it's like drunk uncle all over the place. Instead, focus on these two other lines. You can see they're really tracking quite well. I mean, they're very, very similar here. This is where I made the next stop where I was looking at that break wall, uh, kind of talking about which way I was going to go through here. Um, and you can see that's all tracking just fine. And, and I chose this route because it is sort of complex. I chose it because, you know, you have to go through here through this rock area. I went to here. I made one turn there, one turn up here in the corner. Um, and that was sort of my entire purpose was to do it just like that. 
and then pull back in again there. And I really wanted to see if it would track properly and not cross over these rocks uh, because that would make something really obvious. Like I knew that it would show up just like this on the map if it was weird. Um, so you can see it did this really nicely. And this is exactly where I swam. It's very, very good. Uh, in fact, I actually give the, the nod here to the Phoenix 5 in a slightly better right there. Um, the, the Phoenix 3 on the swim buoy looks like it cuts the corner slightly just because the smart recording that was enabled there. Uh, I normally have it on one second recording, but I must have somehow uh, set it back off to smart. In any case, um, that looks really clean there. And you can see in the end, things are nice. I mean, that's a pretty good swim track overall. Uh, certainly, I'd love to see maybe a tiny bit more perfection on these, uh, you know, in the middle here where it pops in there and there, it adds uh, definitely some yardage. But overall, it's pretty good. If I go down, I can see the um, total distance right here for these two units. Uh, and again, focus on these two uh, because this one was started 500 meters late, so you can already tell it's going to be way over by the time it gets done. Uh, so these two, here's a Phoenix 3 on the swim buoy coming in at 1,470 meters, and the Phoenix 5 on the wrist coming at 1,653 meters. Uh, so you're looking at about 180 or so meters difference, which is maybe a touch bit more than I like to see. I like to see it like in the 10% range um, of the swim buoy. Uh, and so this is just a few percent more than that. But, you know, it's it's in the ballpark. And that's the thing with open water swimming is that you're really looking for things to be in the ballpark. Uh, perfection is not, not unfortunately, the name of the game. And, like, it certainly happens. Like, I've certainly had swims that are within a couple yards. But... Or a couple of meters even that's it's just it's super super rare and all the swims that I've done uh, and that's this is kind of indicative of what I generally have seen with the Phoenix 5 and the open water swimming I've been doing over the last three months uh, is that these are pretty similar so there you go that's just a look at open water swimming don't forget to whack the full in-depth review which goes into way more detail on GPS accuracy and all sorts of other good stuff down the bottom of the link there in the description uh, this is just sort of like a tiny little snippet of that entire in-depth review uh, with that, don't forget to subscribe as well as to hit that like button and have a good one.